All right, so if you're like me, you probably saw on Facebook or somewhere else that Proxmox 8 released today, and you're wondering how to back up to it. So the first thing you probably did is run over to your Proxmox web interface, select server, and go to update, and you did see some updates, but if we press update and we do the updates here, you found this did not update you to version 8. So, so here, looking through the documentation on doing the update, it looks like we're supposed to, so here looking through the documentation on how to do the update from the Proxmox website, it looks like we're sp first supposed to run a script called PVE728, which is going to run a kind of a check and make sure our system is going to be able to run Proxmox 8. So let's go ahead, copy this command, head over to our web interface, click on shell, and go ahead, paste this command, and execute it. And it looks like there is one warning. Now, this is kind of a demo system for me, seven running guests detected. So that's the only real warning here. And this being a demo system, I'm not super worried about that. But the next thing I really want to do is go ahead and back some of this up. And now again, this is a demo system for me, so I'm less concerned about backing this up. But I do want to go ahead and show you how to back these up. So first we're going to start by shutting down or stopping all of these running containers and VM here in our web interface. If we bring this up, you can see them all stopping here. Now to back them up, um, let's go ahead and just kind of back up this React Docker container for a demo. You're gonna select it and then you're gonna go to backup here and you're gonna press backup now. Now it's best especially in this scenario, to back up to an external source. I happen to not have any good source here, so I am backing up to my local disk. Um, there are some tutorials, and we've released some tutorials here on VE about adding different types of backup media, whether it's USB or whatnot. You should probably go ahead and do that, and then go ahead and select that here where it says storage and local. We're going to select snapshot here. We don't need it to send an email, and then we can go ahead and press backup. This will do the entire backup. Now, if you had a USB drive or a NAS added or whatnot, you could select right there at that storage to go ahead and move it over to a NAS. So now that so now that this update's finished, we're going to go back and we're going to select our server and we're going to open our shell here. Now, from these directions, we need to run a PVE version, and we need to make sure that it is. 7.4-12 or higher, and we can see that we're 7-414 here at the web interface, but let's go ahead and run this command anyways, and we notice that we are in at 7.414 running kernel 5.15. So we can continue on in this direction, and it looks like the next thing they want us to do is update the Debian base repositories to bookworm, and we're supposed to be able to do that here with this command. So let's go ahead and copy it and add it in here, press enter, and hopefully that added that repository. Now, moving on to the list and reading some more, um, we have some information here that we need to go ahead and add some comments and remove some stuff in this particular file. So let's go ahead and copy that and then use nano to open up that link, and it looks like nothing is there. That is a little weird, um, but let's try this one, and we do have something here. Now, we did just indeed add uh, Bullseye bur Bookworm G, so this is Bookworm, 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 Bookworm. So what we're looking for here is just to make sure that everything here says bookworm and it doesn't say bullseye. So as you can see, everything here does say bookworm. So let's go ahead, press control X and exit. Now we read a little bit more and it looks like 
since we're going to use no subscription, we should go off and check this, this uh, package repository. So let's go ahead and take a look at that here in a second, which is right here. And it looks like we're going to edit this file etc apc sources.list, which was the file that we're just in. So let's go ahead and open it up. And it looks like we need to have the first deb, which is correct. The next deb is going to be for updates, which is also correct. Then we have a Proxmox no subscription commented out, which it looks like we've removed that at this point. And we're gonna have a new bookworm no subscription right here. So let's go ahead, copy that, move down to the bottom here and paste that in. And it looks like we also have a security update one for main, and it looks like that's correct. So let's go ahead, press Control X, Y, S, and save that. Now, we should be able to run an AT update at this point, and we did get a whole list of packages that needed to be updated. So, let's run an APT dist-upgrade-y and see what happens. All right, so now it looks like at this point we need to select English US, or at least a language for you. Mine's going to be English US. And then I'm going to select N for default, and yes, it's okay to restart during upgrade, and we can use default again. All right, we're gonna go ahead and select default again. All right, so our system rebooted, so let's go ahead, head back to our web interface and refresh. Probably gonna need to remove most of what we have here. All right, so I had to do one more refresh, but it looks like we did successfully update to version 8.03. So going to our servers, going to update, we hit refresh, and we're still getting some error messages. I have an idea of what that is. So let's go to repositories. You can notice that I have two particular repositories in here that are duplicate. So let's go ahead and disable one of them. Go back and try refreshing again. Hopefully that fixes it. And it looks like it did. All right. So I hope you enjoyed tonight's video on how to get your Proxmox 7.4-12 or 14 instance updated to Proxmox version 8. As always, have a good night.